everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. In this video, we're going to go over the ways that you could make an alkene. Now, the good news is that a lot of the heavy lifting was done in the E2 section of Chapter 6. So, it's not going to be as much detail as we did then. Okay, so that's the good news. But there is some more additional information that we're going to add to our knowledge base at this point. And so, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time to, to practice with it, but it's not that much... Uh, you know, new stuff to make it very difficult. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing is we're going to talk about what's known as dehydrohalogenation. Now, you should know what that means because that's really just the E2 that you've already learned about. So, if you have an alkyl halide, you can go ahead and take this alkyl halide, let's say alkyl bromide, and treat it with a base and make alkenes. And we know all about the philosophy of how this can happen. This could be E2, it could be E1, and you know all the things that we discussed. It could be Zaitsev or Hoffman favored location by using a bulky base or a small base. So this is what dehydrohalogenation is all about. So let's just organize ourselves real quick and come up with a, a, a brief summary, but nothing as detailed as what we already did. So it's just kind of more of just a, a little bit of organization, but it's not necessarily um, anything new. If we have a tertiary or a secondary alkyl halide, right, how do we make an E2? So for E2, let's say we use this right here, or we could use that right there. Well, in order to do this, we want a strong base, right? So if it's secondary, strong base, or tertiary, strong base. So if we use a strong base like methoxide, and let's say, actually, let's do a quick comparison since we're doing a review. So let's do methoxide, let's do terpetoxide. Then we know, okay, this is alpha, this is alpha and alpha, right? And here's beta, 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 and beta. Now, the right carbon has three H's, so that's the Hoffman location, and the left carbon has two H's, so that's the Zaitsev location. So with a small base, we favor Zaitsev. Now, if any of this doesn't make sense, which I don't think is going to be the case, but if it doesn't, make sure to go back to the chapter six where I broke out all the philosophy here, okay? So this is just a review. Um, so what we would make here is an alkene like that or an alkene like this, but this would be major and this would be minor. So what did I do? Well, I looked at this carbon on the left. I said it has two H's, so that's better for Zaitsev. And since this is a small base, we go with the Zaitsev location. But when you make an alkene there, you can have either cis or trans because there's two H's. Remember we said if the beta carbon has two H's, you could always rotate around to get it cis or trans. So you get both of them, but of course the major product is going to be trans because that's more stable. And that's what we did there. Now, if we have a bulky base, then we're going to pull from the H that the carbon that has more H's, the beta carbon with more H's, and so that's why we're going to pull from this carbon on the right that has three H's, which is more than two H's. So that's the only answer. There is no cis trans, right? Because it's a terminal alkene. That means that the end carbon has two H's, so you can't have cis trans with that one. Now, the other possibility is tertiary. And we have the same idea, right? So if we have a tertiary, we could use a small base or we could use a bulky base. And so in the case of a small base, now we have a beta carbon here and there and here. So there are three beta carbons. Notice that two of them are the same. They're both methyl. Remember the rule? If they're both the same, you don't have to do double bond both places. It's the same thing twice. So we have two methyl beta carbons and we have one internal beta carbon, which is two H's on it. So for Zaitsev, we're going to make the alkene like that. Now notice that this does not have cis trans. So in this case, we pulled the H from here because it has two H's. The outer ones have three H's. So when you pull from there, you make this alkene right here. And since there's no cis trans, this is the only product. Why is there no cis trans? Because the N carbon double bond has two methyls. Remember, you can't have the same thing twice on the same carbon. So there's no cis trans. Well, if we did the bottom reaction, then we would have a double bond to one of the methyls because they have three H's more than the other beta with two H's. So we could do it like that, or we could do it like that. It's really the same thing twice. So I'll just erase this one here, and that's our answer. Now, does this have cis trans? The answer is no, right? Because 
this has two H's on it, and therefore you can't have cis trans if you have two of the same group on the same double bond carbon. Okay, so this is our E2 stuff, right? So this is all review. Let me just make sure that's clear. This is review of E2 and E1. These are all E2. Now, if you want E1 for E1, then you would have, let's say, a secondary alkyl bromide or a tertiary alkyl bromide, and you would want to use a neutral, remember, neutral is the key here, base. So a weak base. So if we use water, well, then right now we're going to get SM1 and E1. But how do you get only E1? You increase the temperature. So if you have high temperature, if you change the temperature, increase it, then you're going to get E1 only. Oh, oh, like So the higher the temperature, the more E1 favors. You'll always get both, but the major product will be E1. So notice that when you do an E1, this leaves, you make a carbocation, and then when you do your elimination, you always go to the beta carbon with less H's. It's always going to favor Zytiv, right? Always Zytiv favored. Remember that? So for E2, you had to be sensitive to the base. Big base, bulky base, Hoffman, anti zytiv But in this case, always Zytiv. So the alkene that you would form is right there. And of course, you could also make cis, but this here is the major up on top. Trans wins over cis. Okay. Same thing here. If you make that leave, the BR leave, and now you have a carbocation, well, you're going to get always the Zytiv answer. So here's alpha, here's beta, and these are betas, but you're not going to go near those. That's not going to happen. It could be a minor product, but not as a major product, right? So we get the alkene in the most stable location. Okay, so hopefully none of this is new, right? So that's the key here. Nothing here is new. It's just review. That's it. All right. So now let's go on to something new. The new one is dehydration. So this is where you have an alkene that you're going to form from an alcohol plus acid. So there's a few things to know. You get an alkene from that. This is the general idea, the general template. All right. So let's take a look real close. Number one, we have an alcohol as a leaving group right? So the problem here is that alcohol is not a good leaving group. They don't leave readily because they become O- and they're not stable like halogens are big so they can stabilize or fluorine can leave because it's so um, electronegative that it can stabilize. But oxygen doesn't want to leave. So we need to do something different than what we do with halogens and that is add an acid. We must have an acid. Now what is the acid? Well the acid it doesn't have to be H2SO4. So the acid part of this could be H plus if you don't want to write anything specific, right? It could be H2SO4. It could be H3O plus. Any acid that's strong will do. It could be HI or HBr. Okay, so the acid is not really, don't worry too much about it. It could be carboxylic acid, right? It could be carboxylic acid. There are many acids that you can use as long as it's acidic enough to protonate an alcohol. So alcohol pKa is 16. Anything less than 16 is going to be considered an acid. Okay? These are the most common acids, common, but not all by any means because there's many acids that you can use. Okay? These are the common acids. Now, what's happening? Well, fortunately, we don't have to go into such a, a great amount of detail like we did with E1 and E2. We're done with that. We know things that you can do to manipulate the environment, but this is different. This is a different pathway. See, with E1 and E2 with alkyl halides, we had a strong base. Notice that this is not a base pathway. This is an acid pathway. So it's a completely different philosophy. It turns out that E1 is favored over E2. So that, in that regard, you have similarity because when you make the oxygen leave, you could do it in concerted E2, or you could do it one step at a time, E1. So that's the same. But it turns out that E1 is favored. So if an alcohol can go through E1 or E2, it always goes through E1, if it can.